Now let's have a look at how to use backgrounds in Affinity Designer for iPad. Now I'm not talking about using masks and hiding things behind masks and putting them on top of masks. This is quite simply having a foreground image and a background image on two layers. Very simple. So go to your control panel, having opened Affinity Designer, and create a new file. And I've simply got um, a print document here, A4 size. And that's all we need. Now I've reduced the size a little bit. You can see that. So we've got a new blank workspace, A4 size. Believe it or not, but it is. Now, go back to your control panel. You can see there we've got an untitled workspace. In the centre of those two, we've got a, a wooden a wooden panel on one side, our current workspace, and a flower on the other side, which I've previously selected. Open your required foreground image into a new workspace. So if you haven't done it already, you can simply go find a transparent image and open it into a new workspace. When the image opens, ensure it's a transparent PNG file, preferably. This is so when we apply the background beneath it, we don't get a box around the image. And you've all seen that. You have a nice coloured background and you place your selected image on top. Ah, oh, and you've got a white box there. No good. But in this case, we've got a transparent image. Click on Select All in the top toolbar and then Copy on the left hand side there. So we've copied just the flower. Return to the control panel again and open your new blank workspace. That's the one you created at the start. Now select paste to paste the copied foreground image into your blank workspace. You can see the workspace there, white background, now got the black image on top of it. Now once again, return to the control panel again and open your background image that you have selected. Now in this case I selected a wooden panel and it's quite inappropriate and you'll see why shortly, but never mind. Select your background image again, select all and then copy. Two step process. Go back to your workspace with the image on it. So you go back to the control panel, reopen your workspace image and select paste to paste in your background image. It will be placed over your original image, blocking it out. And you think, oh, what's the good of that? Well, we'll see. Resize the background image to fit your original workspace that now contains your foreground image. So what you've got there is your original white image with your foreground image on it, and now your background image is sitting over the top of all of it and you can't see any of it. Open the layer studio and drag the background layer that you just put in to the bottom layer. This will make your background be at the base layer and the image, the flower in this case, will be the top layer so it can be seen. However, this background is too strong. So, and you can see the layers there. I've got the horse chestnut flower and the background, which is the fence sitting below it. But that fence looks a bit faded out. If it was its strong, normal image that I first imported, you won't see the horse chestnut flower. So making sure the background layer is selected, go to layer options and click and drag the opacity bar to suit your image if it's too strong. And in this case, that's what I did. The set the opacity to about 54%. You can still see the wooden fence there and the horse chestnut flower sitting on top of it. It's not really appropriate and it's not a good image, but I wanted to demonstrate clearly putting a background behind a foreground image by using layers. You should now have a finished image with background and you can see the two layers there and the image, foreground image on the background layer. That's it. Thank you for watching 
and please subscribe and like my channel. Much appreciated. And there's my address. Very easy to find my YouTube um, channel if you want to. Just youtube.com slash C slash Robert Chalmers.